up, guys? Welcome back to the Make or Break Show. This is episode two, and we have an amazing maker, all around great woodworker, metal worker. We're going to feature this week. His name is Johnny Brook. You probably recognize him from uh, the Crafted Workshop. He also has an excellent podcast called The Crafted Podcast that I encourage you guys to check out. Uh, he jumps on with a couple of other hosts, and they talk each week about the things they've got going on. It's one that I do not miss every single week. Uh, but Johnny is a, a blast to talk to. Um, he actually comes um, from more of the media uh, marketing side of things. He actually did a lot of stuff uh, with cigars uh, and helping promote that. And you can definitely tell his video background uh, as well as his marketing background and all that he does. Um, he actually did a magazine way back in the day. You might recognize the Crafted Magazine, which was online, which featured a bunch of different makers, kind of like what we're doing with this podcast, but just in a more blog magazine form. Uh, and then that kind of evolved into the Crafted Workshop as he got more into the projects. Uh, if you've seen any of his videos, you probably have seen the River Table video, which has blown up. Uh, we get into how that worked. Uh, uh, as well as uh, what it's like just putting out videos on a weekly basis. But uh, Johnny is an amazing uh, maker. Be sure and check him out over on Instagram at The Crafted Workshop, as well as on his website, craftedworkshop.com. But without further ado, let's dive into our interview with Johnny. All right, guys, well, uh, welcome back uh, to the Make or Break podcast. We're hanging out uh, with Johnny Brook, Mr. Johnny Book, from All Things Crafted, Crafted Workshop, uh, uh, maker of amazing things, as well as one of the hosts on the... Are, are you the host of the Crafted podcast? Do you take kind of the lead when you guys are talking about I it? I mean, we're co-hosts, but I guess I, I'm more of the moderator is how I think. Moderator, it. You know what okay. I mean? Like, I, I kind of follow the show notes and kind of make sure we're moving through the segments and that kind of stuff. So I, I, I think of it more in that kind of role. Gotcha. So moderator, craftsman, beer junkie, yeah, all those totally. things. And, uh, all those things. Well, cool. Well, uh, we're excited to, to have you on and chat. I know you're behind the mic every week on the Crafted Podcast. Yep. So if you guys haven't listened to that one, that one's a blast uh, to listen to. Uh, but Thanks. we'd love to kind of get into your, your backstory and making. Uh, yeah. And so growing up was like making, was that kind of part of your story? Were you that kid always building something in the backyard? You know, I, I don't know how much it really was. I mean, so my dad is like a hobbyist woodworker. So I kind of okay. grew up around it a little bit and, you know, watching this old house, New Yankee Workshop and stuff like that. So uh, certainly familiar with the general idea of, you know, woodworking and things like that. But um, I think I was much more of a computer kid okay. than a you know, as much of an outdoorsy person, I, I also, you know, was super into like skateboarding and all that kind of stuff. So I think some of those hobbies kind of led me into making stuff like building skateboard ramps mm -hmm. or, you know, bike ramps or whatever. So <clears throat> that was definitely, I think, you know, earlier on a uh, part of it, but I, I don't think I really developed a, a real big, you know, kind of passion for making stuff until kind of later, you know, high school, college, I started working at a bike shop and would kind of build bikes and, you know, take them apart and, you know, make different bikes and, and change components and that kind of stuff. So, you know, I've always kind of been, I think like mechanically inclined and okay. obviously, you know, played with Lego and stuff growing up, but, um, certainly not until very recently did I really get into actually, I think making things. Yeah. So. Yeah. Was it, uh, was it like BMX style bikes? The shop you're um, working at? Mostly mountain bikes. Mountain well, bikes, okay. actually, the shop I was working at was Performance Bike, which they're kind of a, a chain. Um, so they sold like everything from, okay. you know, kids' bikes to, you know, high performance road bikes to mountain bikes. But the stuff I always enjoyed the most was like mountain bikes and that, that whole kind of scene you know, of, uh, downhilling and free ride and stuff really appealed to me. Cause I just, you know, I, I never had the guts to really do nearly as much of that stuff as some of the guys I'd watch on, you know, like videos and yeah. stuff, but I just always thought it was amazing. So yeah. Yeah. I'd always watch the videos, especially like the GoPro footage and they're just flying oh, yeah. down mountains. I'm like, I would destroy myself. It, it's insane. I mean, I still mountain bike and, and enjoy it, but I'm certainly, you know, at the, the, the blues, not the black diamonds or anything like that, you know, not, not, uh, anything super crazy. So yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, so I was doing a little bit of, of homework uh, on you. And so that's how you did uh, CIS at Georgia State. Is that right? Yeah. Computer information yeah. systems. So yeah, I went to uh, Georgia State, and uh, basically, I didn't really know what I wanted to major in in mm -hmm. college for, for most of it. I, I kind of 
started first year I went to Barry College in Rome, Georgia, and then transferred to Georgia State because didn't really like Barry very much, but kind of bounced around. My my first major was like TV and radio. I kind okay. of wanted to either be, you know, either behind the scenes at a TV station or or on screen or like a radio DJ. But mm-hmm. then kind of quickly realized that especially being a radio DJ was kind of uh, not going to be a, a career path that, yeah. that would be, you know, lucrative. Uh, that was, I guess, back in like 2007. So, okay. um, you know, radio was really falling apart, I think, at that point. Um, and so I switched my major to music production and really thought, you know, oh, working in a studio or something like that would be cool. Um, huge, huge music guy. But then again, you know, the music business was kind of imploding at that time with, you know, Napster and, and, you know, downloading music and that kind of stuff, kind of changing the way that whole system works. So I basically just was trying to think of something that, you know, I was probably good at and would also make money. So yeah, I I did, uh, basically it was a business degree, uh, with a, a focus on, you know, computer, like it type of stuff. So most of my classes though were just general, uh, business. There were uh, actually, the, I think the way they do it at Georgia State, there's only like three classes that really uh, are applied to your specific concentration. So gotcha. everything else was like, you know, macro and microeconomics and finance and marketing and, you know, all things that have served me pretty well, just kind of, you know, having a good handle on how businesses work and, and that kind of stuff has been uh, good for me. So yeah. 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 So did you live downtown when it was still downtown? <laughs> Yeah, for a little bit of it, I I lived it. They had just built these new kind of dorms down there and lived there for a year, but didn't really like it. It had like really heavy security, which you can imagine is is necessary down there. So like just getting up to my room was like, five different like locked key oh, points wow. and stuff and it's yeah, just yeah. like just going to get groceries was like a whole thing so um ended up living in decatur uh actually with who is now my wife my girlfriend at the time uh in in a house that they kind of had and were renting out and cool. much much preferred that just outside of downtown decatur in atlanta and that was much more my style you know took marta down to school and that kind of stuff so yeah it was uh it was good you know georgia state i, I don't feel like i had like the real like, you know, your, your typical college experience. Cause yeah. it's much more of like, uh, people just go to class and then they go home or go to their job or whatever. You know, there's not a lot of, I think like hanging out on campus or at least there wasn't when I was there, but you know, that, uh, it, it, I, I learned some stuff and, you know, got my degree and, uh, moved on so yeah that's cool uh i actually went to georgia tech and so oh nice man uh, i think we had just bought our guests tech had just bought like the old dorms from you guys like on north nice. Ave, and so yeah. i always had friends that would stay there but yeah the security stuff was always fun you're like i don't know if i can get inside oh, to well but, and then traffic it, it was, oh yeah you know, that's not you know that, that's kind of why i live where i live now because i it, i think i got so tired of all that stuff just growing up around that so yeah yeah so what what brought you up to Asheville then or right outside so my wife, uh, she went to graduate school and so we were in South Florida for like four years and then the Boston area for two and then she got a job in this area. So that, that's kind of why we ended up here and really happy we did. I, I love it here. It's, it's kind of got everything I want and not really much that I don't. So, um, you know, I, we got really lucky with the house we ended up in this, we got this huge garage. And so, you know, that was immediately as soon as we saw this house it's like okay well i'm getting into woodworking as soon as we move here because yeah. it was like this is you know a dream shop space and uh you know there's tons of uh, hardwood like dealers and stuff like that in the area so um it is kind of stiff competition there's a lot of really really good furniture makers in Asheville, but since that's not really the main part of my mm-hmm. business it's not as much of a concern but uh it, definitely some really talented people here so it's it's pretty cool and inspiring place to live yeah yeah uh, i keep hearing you talk about all the walnut that you keep getting up there i'm like <laughs> yeah. man i need some more trees to fall uh, around uh, here yeah. to get sport walnut so yeah it's it's pretty i mean you know craigslist up here you can get pretty lucky it's yeah. uh, it's got some cheap stuff for sure that's cool so did the the making in the woodwork side of things is that just kind of happen out of necessity around the house like yeah i don't want to pay thousands of dollars for yeah. a table yeah, kind of. I mean, so I, I've always been into like kind of handmade stuff and, you know, huge craft beer guy. Basically, if it can be like craft, I'm usually into it. So, like, you know, craft coffee yeah. and craft whatever, you know, I just, I really like to support, you know, small kind of, you know, 
companies who are making cool stuff. And so like previous to this being crafted workshop is actually crafted magazine. So I put out like an issue every other month and we kind of feature people who were making cool stuff. Yeah. And, uh, so when we moved into this house, you know, I'd kind of always been interested in making stuff like this, but we had lived in apartments and stuff. So it just wasn't really something that was in the cards. And so I bought like a miter saw before we even moved in, had it shipped to like my in-laws and they brought it up the weekend we moved in. And that weekend built like a couple Adirondack chairs and a standing desk. And yeah, I think a lot of it back then was out of necessity just cause you know, like, especially we have this big back patio and we are like, man, patio furniture is expensive, especially yeah. like if you want stuff that looks decent and, uh, is going to hold up. So, you know, built a bunch of Anna White projects, uh, at, at first and really just kind of dove heavy into it, you know, started watching tons of YouTube and stuff like that. And just trying to kind of learn as much as I could. That it's kind of <laughs> typical of me when I get into hobbies, I get super obsessed with them yeah. and just, you know, dive in hot and heavy and, and learn as much as possible. And, uh, yeah, it's kind of crazy to think that like, basically like two years and like a month ago, I had never really done much of any woodworking. So it's been a, been a wild ride. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I was going back on your YouTube, uh, list and I was like sorting by like the oldest and like, yeah. it was only like a couple of years that I guess yeah. it switched over. Uh, yeah. so, but the, so craft and magazine, you were just, that was just craft in general, like just makers yeah. all over the board. Okay. Pretty That's much. Cool. Yeah. So I basically like, I've always been interested in that kind of thing. And, you know, so I would go like a leather shoe maker or something, go to their factory and like interview them and, you know, take pictures around the factory That's and, cool. you know, it was, I really enjoyed it because I just like seeing how stuff is yeah. made. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you know, that it's especially living up in Boston was really a good spot for that. Cause there's a ton of that kind of culture up in that, you know, area and, and just new England in general. So, um, that was, uh, that was a good spot to, to do that. But then as soon as I had space to do word working and then I started seeing how much other people were kind of succeeding doing that stuff on YouTube and, and elsewhere, I was like, well, I should probably, uh, move into this. So that yeah, yeah. Kind of spawned that. So, so was it a, uh, was it like an online magazine? Or like a print? Yeah. Or, okay. No, I never did print. I, I thought about it, but honestly, printing is so expensive. Oh, yeah. And personally, I don't even read print magazines. So yeah. I had an iPad and iPhone app and then a web oh, cool. version. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it was uh, it was fun. You know, it was uh, it was small, definitely small, but had, you know, some paid subscribers and uh, just had fun with it. So I got to go meet cool people and, uh, you know, do cool stuff. So it was fun. Well, who was the favorite craftsman if you had to pick one from doing That's it? That's tough, man. Um, so I'm a big shoe guy. So I saw a lot of cool leather shoemakers. Um, went up to actually L.L. Bean's factory up there, which was pretty amazing to see. And then also there's another shoe company in, in Maine called Rancourt. And so they both make a similar style of like sewn toe boot but do it in completely different ways. Cause LL Bean is, as you know, like this huge company and Rancourt has like, you know, 50 employees or something. So much, much smaller and, and, you know, but both still making like handmade leather goods, but just their, you know, some efficiencies and things like that. Like LL Bean had a, a laser cutter for leather so they could scan in the whole hide oh, that's cool. place all the parts as efficiently as possible because every hide is a little different that's yeah. the crazy thing like we get used to you know buying sheet goods or dimensional lumber everything's the same but with hides you've got you know it's the side of a cow so yeah, yeah, yeah. how big it is or maybe there are you know marks from them rubbing up against a you know fence or whatever and uh that was it, was, it was pretty cool. So probably the leather stuff. And I mean, obviously craft beer is always cool too. I'm, I'm a huge craft beer guy. So, uh, but probably the leather stuff. That's cool. That's really cool. So yeah. when did you kind of make the transition into more of the workshop and the kind of the DIY yeah. side of things? So I think I put out my first, my first woodworking video on the channel was that workbench. It was like a Matthias Wandel, you know, solid core, really, really simple solid core door workbench. And, uh, that was the first woodworking thing I did, uh, for video or any content like that. And, you know, it, it did pretty decently. And, um, so I think after that, you know, I, I knew I wanted to incorporate more woodworking content, but uh, didn't transition over to only doing that, I think, for another number of months. I don't think it was till like probably July of last year or maybe a, a May or June, but not till right before basically I, I quit to do this full time, essentially. So um, it took me a while to figure out that 
you know, as they say, the riches are in the niches. So, yeah. you know, focusing on one topic, that, that's what I think the, the downfall always was of Crafted Magazine was almost was too broad, yeah. you know. So, like, one month it'd cover coffee and leather and the next month it'd be beer and, and denim or whatever. So, you know, if somebody was into one thing and that wasn't consistent from issue to issue, they might not stick around. So, um, I think I figured out that that was going to be a, a good path to success. So, focused on the making side exclusively at that point. So what were you doing before you went full time? So I worked for a cigar company actually out of Miami. Uh, when I, when we lived down there, I started working for them. I did pretty much all their digital marketing okay. and like web design and video production stuff, basically all the stuff I'm doing now. Um, and for probably the first four years I worked there, it was really just me doing it. So got to learn a lot and had, you know, like a budget and, you know, was actually able to like, you know, do paid advertising and, and, you know, pay for boosted posts on Facebook and kind of just see how all that stuff worked and, yeah. you know, what was effective and what wasn't. And, um, it was, it was a lot of fun. I mean, I, I had a cigar review blog in, in college and that's kind of how I got into that and met, met the owner of the company I worked for through that. And, uh, got the job that way. And so really kind of honed my skills as a digital marketer and, and that kind of thing during that job. So definitely, uh, that, that helped a lot, you know, That's helped cool. me kind of get to where I am now. So what was that conversation like with your wife? Like when you're wanting to go full time or what was that kind it, of a decision process like for you? Yeah. So it's interesting. Um, Cause I think, so while she was going through graduate, graduate school, like I was the one with the normal full-time job and, you know, the steady, you know, every two weeks that you can count on that direct deposit yeah, coming yeah, yeah. through. And, uh, <laughs> so I think as I started getting more and more into this side of things and, and doing more of the, the woodworking videos and it continued to kind of catch on a little bit, um, she just started to see that I was totally passionate about that side of things. And the day job was just dragging me down and, and really not uh, part of what I wanted to do. So, um, she actually just came in and woke me up one morning and was like, you should quit your day job and oh, wow. do this yeah. full time. So yeah, it was, uh, it was awesome. I mean, honestly, cause, uh, you know, I'm a very risk averse person when uh -huh. it comes to finance. So I am, uh, <laughs> I'm not a huge, you know, I hate gambling and I, I don't, you know, like I, I'm not into that kind of stuff. So, um, it, it was a pretty big jump for me, but you know, she had gotten her doctorate and gotten her job. And so, you know, we can easily kind of survive on her income. So it was not a, not a really a big risk, you know, it's like, okay, if I quit my job and this doesn't work out, then I'll just get another job in marketing, which are kind of a dime a dozen these days. And, uh, you know, I've, I've got the skills to back it up. So, uh, wouldn't be terribly difficult to get a job in that field. So, um, it's, yeah, it's kind of funny cause I've heard Bob tell Bob from, I like to make stuff, tell his kind of story. And it, 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 it sounds similar, you know, it's like he was a software engineer and it's like, he quits his job and it doesn't work. You just go get another job. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's not like there is only one job in the world for you. And if you quit it, then that's, that's it, yeah. you know? So, um, it was, a a risk we were both willing to take. And honestly, I quit probably way before I had any business quitting. I think I probably had like 5,000 subscribers when I quit. It was uh, like yeah. super, super early. Yeah. Um, but I just knew if I put in like the full time work, I could grow it way, way faster than if I was trying to do it on the side. And, uh, you know, a year, a little over a year later, it's, uh, it's working. So yeah, it's that's good. cool. Do you have any early memories from after you went full time where it kind of hit you like, Oh man, this is like, this is my deal now. Yeah, it was, uh, it was very odd. You know, I think at first, the first probably week I still had this anxiety of like, Oh, I should be back at my desk, like, you know, doing whatever day job stuff I was supposed to be doing. And it took me a while to really think, Oh no, no, this is, now I set my own schedule, you know, it's, it was a very weird shift. I mean, I was already working from home. So that was like, you know, one thing that I didn't really have to change. And I'd already been working out of our you know house or apartment before that for a couple of years. So I was used to that, used to kind of managing my own time and uh, used to avoiding the distractions that are at home, you know, video games or TV or whatever, which is kind of an easy thing to get sucked into as a self-employed person. But uh, yeah, so that was the biggest shift was just, you know, getting in my head that, no, I, it, I'm not going to get a phone call from them, you know, telling me I need to come do something. So it was, uh, it was a little weird, but it was, it was awesome at the same time, you know, and just immediately incredibly busy, you know, just because trying to put out one project video a week, it's, uh, it's time consuming. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. 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 For those that, that may not know, what's it kind of like now 
like weekly for you? Like, do you have kind of like set days where you're building and editing or does it change up? Yeah. I mean, it, it kind of changes depending on like, I've started traveling more just cause you know, like I think as you get more, you know, known, you start getting more invited to places and things like that. And so, you know, going to events and stuff can really throw off your schedule, but generally, so I, I put out my videos on Tuesday. So generally Tuesday morning, I'm, I'm finishing up editing, getting the video uploaded and posting it and, you know, spreading it around everywhere. Um, and then Thursdays now we do our podcasts in the morning. So that's pretty much my whole morning. Um, just doing the podcast and getting it edited and put out. Um, but then outside of that, it's pretty flexible. You know, it, it depends cause you know, you gotta have phone calls with advertisers and things like that. So that's kind of always something you got to integrate in the schedule somewhere. So, um, I usually, Wednesday is usually a pretty shop heavy day for me. Um, like yesterday I was, I was pretty much out in the shop all day working. Um, Wednesdays are really tiring. Actually, they're, they're one of the more exhausting days of the yeah, week. Yeah. Um, and usually Friday is typically the same way. Um, I do end up working some on the weekends generally just cause there's not enough time. I don't think to get it all done during the week. Um, and again, that really just depends on what project I'm working on. And if I've got like a client deadline or whatever, those, those things can kind of, you know, adjust my schedule. And usually then Monday is kind of my mad dash to finish the weekly project and get it edited and, and stuff like that. So, um, that's generally how the week plays out, but it's, it's certainly very flexible and just depends on, you know, what else I have going on. So. That's cool. Yeah. That's real cool. Yeah. With the the projects you're working on now, especially the videos you've put out, has there been one that's like that's popped that like you weren't expecting that was like a surprise? Yeah, I mean, the river table certainly has been a massive surprise. Yeah. I, mean, I, I figured it'd probably do decently just because I thought it was a cool project, but I mean I, I never expected I think it's like over a million views at this point. So I never never really expected that to happen. And and honestly, I think that video like solely has been responsible for a, a massive part of my growth over the past, you know, I think I put it out in April. So the past, however many months. So yeah, yeah, yeah. it, uh, it's one of those videos that just, I don't know, YouTube, I guess they like it cause they keep pushing it. And I'm not <laughs> at this point, I'm not doing anything to promote it. You know, it's just there and it's still getting, you know, whatever, however many thousands of views every other day and just keeps, keeps getting views. So yeah. I don't know where they're coming from, but Hey, I'm, I'm fine with that. <laughs> they can keep on rolling in. So. Yeah. Yeah. That thing, that thing's so cool. Cause I think I first saw your stuff when you did the J Bates miter station. Yeah. Cause I was looking yeah. at it. I was like, Oh, this is cool. And I think you were still maybe doing the magazine at that point or you still was. branded that. And yeah. then I started listening to the podcast and I didn't make the connection. Like you were the same person until yeah. I think I saw the river table. I'm like, Oh, this is like the same guy that's doing the yeah. stuff. So that's really, yeah, cool. that was the Jay Bates thing was another kind of early, uh, I think success for me. And a, another thing that kind of convinced me, oh, I need to do this woodworking thing. Cause literally I was just building his design yeah. and you know, I, I got, you know, a, a bunch of views that came like suggested views from his build. Yeah. I think I was and, one of those cause I was watching yeah. his and I was like, Oh, this like picture looks like this guy knows like how to shoot video. And like, this actually <laughs> looks like professional. So let me watch this. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. Well, and I was kind of lucky back then, you know, when I was still working for the day job, like I had a Canon 6D and oh, you know, cool. a nice mic. And so I had kind of all that equipment that I had here at the house. Cause whenever I would go travel to events for the, the company, I would need to bring that stuff with yeah. me. So, um, I could kind of use that in my free time. And, you know, of course I already knew how to video edit and yeah. stuff. I learned to do that in like high school. So, um, it's, yeah, it, really it, it was a pretty easy thing for me to get into. I mean, I think, you know, once the biggest thing is just figuring out your style and like how you want your stuff to look and, you know, voiceover and or, no voiceover and, you know, like that kind of thing. So, but once you figure that stuff down, it, it kind of goes pretty, pretty smooth. Yeah, so. yeah. Yeah. What's kind of the direction you're wanting to go is the stuff that you're doing now. Do you feel that that's kind of your sweet spot or is there something kind of more that you're reaching for? Yeah. I mean, I think I definitely, and and enjoying what I'm doing now, I still feel like I have a ton to learn when it comes to woodworking. So kind of always trying to progress. I, I've been trying to incorporate some more kind of mediums into the channel in the last couple of months. So I've done like leather and concrete and upholstery and things like that. Um, I would like to add electronics to the uh -huh. mix. I, I don't really, I'm, I'm a tech nerd, but I don't know how to like solder and stuff like that. So yeah. Uh, that would be kind of a cool side. I'd love to build a guitar amp, for example. Oh, cool. I think that'd be a really fun build. Um, but uh, I'd also probably start 
like to start doing some more bigger stuff. Like we have our attic space here is already framed out. It's got subfloor, like it's it's already got outlets and stuff. So I'd love to finish that space and kind of turn it into an upstairs office for me so I could kind of use this room for something else. And uh, so I think that'd be kind of cool, you know, put in hardwood floors, hang drywall, uh, put in insulation, all those kind of more, you know, carpenter type of skills that I know nothing about. Um, and then also just some bigger projects, you know, I'd love to, like, if we move my next shop, I'd love to build it myself or, you know, do some sort of like, uh, I know some people who are wanting like a camper van conversion thing, like convert a sprinter van into a camper. And like, that would be super fun to me. Um, just some, I think, bigger stuff because, you know, there's only so many coffee tables and end tables you can build until it starts to get, you know, kind of boring. Yeah. Uh, but I think for me, just continuing to push that kind of design uh, look of things and, and incorporate, like I'd love to use the CNC a little more to get some more interesting maybe shapes or, uh, you know, textures out of out of my pieces and, and that kind of stuff. So, you know, just, just continuing to keep things fresh. You know, I think if I built the same style forever, I'd get super bored with it. So, yeah. you know, always trying to evolve and, and that kind of thing. That's cool. That's real cool. Uh, yeah. So before we kind of wrap up, uh, the podcast. So the Crafted Podcast, you guys are coming up on a year, right? Was it last October that you started? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So yeah. how did you, how'd you get connected, uh, with, uh, with James and Zach on that? Yeah, it's, it's funny. We, uh, I think Zach reached out to me on Facebook. I, I had featured him on, uh, my weekly maker roundup, which I was doing back then, which I just don't have time to do anymore. But, uh, I'd found Zach on Reddit and, uh, had been following his channel since I found him there. And, um, you know, he was putting out cool stuff. So I think after I featured him, you know, I told him that I had featured him and then he messaged me back saying he wanted to start a podcast. And I was basically like, no, there's too many podcasts, you know, too many woodworking podcasts out there. I don't, I don't think we need one, but you know, kind of kept talking to him and, and kept in touch. And eventually I think, uh, you know, we, we both agreed that, okay, this, this wouldn't be a ton of work and it would be a good thing to add. And yeah. so started looking for another co-host and you know, it's uh, it was kind of hard to find because, you know, either people we wanted sometimes had their own podcast or, you know, we, we wanted somebody who was different enough from the stuff we made to make it interesting. And so, um, I also featured James on the weekly maker roundup and, uh, thought, you know, it's, it's kind of like the, the wood talk formula, yeah, you know, yeah, you've yeah. got the, the hand tool guy who's kind of the, uh, you know, the third opinion always. So, um, uh, we, you know, reached out to him and he was immediately like, yeah, let's do it. So, um, just kind of started recording shows and, you know, it's been, it's been going good. You know, sometimes, sometimes it's a little hard to come up with topics after, uh, you know, recording however many hours of, of talking, but luckily we've got a pretty, uh, active live chat every week That's and cool. that really, really kind of helps to keep things moving along. And, uh, it's fun. It's, it's, it's been good. That's cool. How do you guys record it? Just talking shop a little bit. Yeah. We, uh, so we were using this platform called Spreaker okay. and that both live streamed it and uh, had an app for it, but we found that very few people actually use the app. So um, we switched to YouTube for live streaming, which makes sense yeah. since we're all kind of focused on YouTube anyway. Um, and now we're using this program called Zencaster, which okay. is yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah. You should totally check it out. Because um, again, for me, I'm kind of in the country, so sometimes my audio isn't that great, especially if I'm trying to look something up in the background while we're talking, I'll get uh, broken up quite a bit. So the cool thing about Zencaster is it records everybody locally. And then after the episode uploads it all to the cloud and they'll even do like some automatic post-production where cool. they'll normalize everybody's audio. And like if one person's talking, they'll duck the other people, like if they're coughing or something. Um, so it, it makes it so I have to do very little work. Yeah. It still yeah, yeah. sounds pretty good. So, um, it's, uh, it's been good. Some weeks, some weeks we have issues if like one of us forgets to like set the right input for Zencaster, then we have to pull the YouTube audio and that's always much worse quality, but it's luckily nobody's ever complained about it, but I'm kind of an audiophile, so it bothers me to no end when that happens. But, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, most people listen in their cars with a ton of road noise, so I don't think they notice anyway, but uh, yeah. That's cool. When I first started listening, I think it was probably three or four months ago, yeah. um, James was doing like the really quiet, like intros and i thought yeah. that was his actual like personality until like i started yeah. watching his videos i'm like oh he's like messing around with with yes folks, so. totally it's it was supposed to be an inside joke and i think new people didn't really get it um and so it it's 
he's actually, I think recently just stopped doing it. Um, cause I, I don't know, I, I guess he just got tired of doing it. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, it was, uh, kind of a, a funny, odd thing that he did yeah. for sure. Yeah, I was like, what is, what's going on? It's, it's been, <laughs> it's been a blast to, to listen to you guys yeah. each week. Thanks man. Uh, well, cool. Well, the, the last, the two questions, uh, we want to ask everybody to go off the kind of the make and the break theme, is there a project that you've made or what's the project you've made you'd say you're the most proud of? It doesn't have to be most popular, but the one that you yeah. enjoy the most. I mean, it, it probably is the river table just because I love the way that thing came out. Um, I is, think, is that at yeah. your house? Like, do you, you have yeah. that? One? Okay, that's cool. Yeah, so that's the other thing. I don't get to keep all my pieces, you know, yeah. since I built some, some client stuff. So it, it is nice to have that as like, you know, it's right in our den. It's right off the foyer. So right when people walk into the house, that's like one of the first things they see. And it's a total focal point of the room. So definitely pretty proud of that one. Um, I really like the leather and walnut stool I did recently. I thought that was a really fun one and really happy with the way that yeah, turned out. Yeah, that thing out. was really cool. Yeah. So those are probably two of my favorites. That's cool. Uh, sweet. And so then on the the break side of things, do you have any moments to stand out like where something really went wrong, but like kind of what you learned on the backside of it? Yeah, there's <laughs> there's a lot of those. Yeah, I mean, yeah. there's probably one of those almost every project, but yeah. probably the one that stands out the most. I was building this organ cabinet for a guy. I did a video on it, but it it didn't do so well, which isn't surprising because it was an organ cabinet. But um, I had glued up the legs uh, backwards, un- unbeknownst to me. Oh no! And so I was going to glue up the whole kind of frame. And had, you know, dominoes pounded in with glue on them. Everything was ready to go. And I was like trying to put it together. I was like, there are no holes here. Like what's going on? Well, it turned out that it was backwards. So the holes were on the other side. So while like the glue is sitting there setting up, I had to like pull out the domino, like put cut domino mortises like on the fly while I'm trying to hold this thing. And it was a very, very stressful moment. And my wife was out there helping me glue up and she's like, this is the last time I'm helping you do it. <laughs> Cause, uh, it was, it was not a good, not a good look. So, um, that was one that uh, definitely stands out, but you know, I mean, woodworking, I think half the battle is figuring out how to cover up your, your screw ups. Yeah. Cause it's so hard. Like, especially like it always happens to me when I'm rushing, you know, if I, if I'm really trying to kind of bang out a project quickly, that is when I will make a mistake. Cause I'm thinking instead of paying attention to the step I'm on, I'm thinking, thinking like three steps ahead and that guaranteed you're going to screw up. So, um, yeah, take your time, think things through. That's, that's my biggest advice. For yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Well, sweet. Yeah. Well, uh, so it was uh, craftedworkshop.com. Is that the best place to send people to? That's it, man. Yeah, that's pretty much, uh, you know, everything I post gets posted there. Uh, obviously, my YouTube channel is my big focus, but I'm also super active on Instagram. So if people want to check me out over there, it's at Crafted Workshop. And then also check out the podcast. We put out shows every week. Crafted Podcast. Uh, you watch the live stream on YouTube every week and uh, download us on iTunes. Sweet. Well, thank you so much for hanging out. I love chatting with you. Yeah, man. No problem. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. Well, good stuff.